finishing off this group of paintings. The paintings you see in this video are practically done. The last thing needed is to check how strong is the connection of paint skin to painted acrylic glass. I use a palette knife to check to see if there are any gaps on the edges of the skin. I'm also checking along the actual edges of the painting in those times when the paint skin goes over the edge of the panel. With that Zacto, I cut away the pieces of the skin that go over the edge. It's easy cutting off the excess skin. The edge of the plexiglass acts like a straight edge. The knife can't actually cut the plexi. The only danger comes in when the Zacto knife slips and slices the front of the painting. It is not fatal damage we're talking about here, but it's like a scratch you're putting on the painting that can be seen when you hold it up to the light at certain angles. I collect the skins I cut away. I collect all acrylic skins, in fact. I have collections of strips, bits, wedges, pieces, sheets, and all other types of paint skins that were to be disposed of. I do it because I sometimes make thick, jagged paint skins on which to paint. I call this constructed impasto painting. Acrylic paints are notorious for not giving the painter as much a thickness as oils. If I want an impasto painting, I circumnavigate this problem by building up my paint skins before painting. As I make such work, I glob on thick amounts of gel medium along with color, adding on more paint skins as needed and getting thorny looking concoctions in the end. It's a very different way of painting, and I like changing it up from time to time. It makes things interesting. As you saw just a moment ago, I prop up the panel against something and leave it there so that it could dry standing. If it doesn't dry like that, the medium is naturally going to drip onto other things and actually get on, on the backside of the plexiglass under the blue film that the plexi comes with. You'd think that as precariously as I prop up my panels, they often fall, but it has only happened a handful of times when I had to quickly clean up the mess. The white bottle has GAC 200 by Golden Paints. It's an acrylic medium that leaves little tack and dries very hard. It has a stronger adhesion than regular mediums. I run it along the edge as if I'm drawing a straight line with it. 
This kind of paint application has a name. It's called extrusion. You do this when you get a bottle like the one I'm using, or a paint tube, or a syringe, and you squeeze out the paint or medium as you are running along a line. It's kind of like drawing with a bottle. Finishing paintings like this, this is what it takes to finish this type of work. There's one more minor step involved, but I'll reserve that for another video. By the way, the bottle is a container produced by makers of baking supplies. Wilton is the company name. I suppose such bottles were designed for extruding icing on a cake, and I'm using them with paint. One pro tip is any kitchen utensils you use in the studio, you never want to use them back in the kitchen. If you like what you see, like and subscribe to Zapstrack Kinetics. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to new videos. Follow me on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash Ray Armenteros. That's R-E-Y-A-R-M-E-N-T-E-R-O-S. And on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash Ray underscore Armenteros. That's Ray, R-E-Y underscore A-R-M-E-N-T-E-R-O-S. Thanks for watching.